Hello and welcome to this lesson on logic gates. At the end of this lesson I want you to be able to do four things. Explain what a logic gate is. Explain what a truth table is. Describe truth tables for three particular types of gate, an AND, NOT and OR gate. And for the higher tier candidates you need to be able to describe the truth tables for two extra gates, a an NAND and a NOR gate. So our first question is, what is a logic gate? Well, logic gates are the basis of all electronic circuits. They are used in hundreds of devices around your home. Take the domestic boiler in the image on the right, for example. We want our boiler to follow a set of instructions. For example, we only want it to light if the pilot light is lit and the chimney flue is unblocked. Another set of instructions we might want it to obey are, for example, we want it to come on when a timer tells it to, or we want it to come on when we press the override button, or even we want it to come on when the temperature falls below a certain level. The boiler contains circuits, the electronic circuits, that use logic gates to actually follow these instructions. Logic gates take a series of inputs, make sense of them, and create an output. So for example the input may come from a thermistor which is sensing the temperature level or the override button that's been pressed by the person in the house or the timer that was set the evening before. A logic gate will take those inputs and actually create a response and in this case the boiler will light. So just to be clear a logic gate is an electronic circuit that takes some input signals and creates an output signal. There are three types of gate that you need to be aware of. They are the AND gate, the OR gate and the NOT gate. We'll start off by looking at the AND gate in some detail. This is the circuit symbol for an AND gate. An AND gate receives two input signals and gives out one output signal. It will only produce an output signal if both the inputs A and B are both on. So in our example of a boiler, input A could be from the pilot light to show that it is lit and input B could be from the gas flue showing that it is unblocked and if both of these things are happening, if they're both on, then of course the boiler will switch on. It is called an AND gate because both inputs A and B need to be on for there to be an output. This rather fuzzy picture allows us to look at the AND gate in more detail. Transistors can be used to make logic gates and here we can see that two transistors are used in series to make an AND gate. Each input signal is connected to the base of a transistor. The input signal for a transistor is either high or low. So when the input signal is low, the transistor will be switched off because no current will flow through the base emitter circuit. When the input signal is high, there is a base current and the transistor will be switched on. In an AND gate you can think of these two transistors as being two switches in series. They both have to be on in order to have an output to the output circuit. A truth table for a gate simply shows us all the possible outputs from all the possible inputs. For an AND gate the only time we can have a high output so we can switch the output circuit on is if both the inputs are high or both the inputs are on. So again going back to our example of the boiler the only way we can have the boiler switching on is if the pilot light is lit and the gas flue is unblocked. Any other combination of inputs for example if the gas pilot light was lit but the flue was actually blocked would actually result in the boiler not coming on. So the other two gates that you need to be aware of, um, certainly for foundation, are the OR gates and the NOT gates. So here are their circuit symbols. I'm going to deal with the OR gate first of all. The OR gate is similar to the uh, AND gate in the sense that it has two inputs and the output will always come on if either of those are on. So A or B is high, then you will get a high output. We can see this more clearly in the truth table. 
So for an OR gate, you will get an output circuit turning on if any signal is received in either of the two inputs. So if input A is low and B is high, the circuit will come on. If A is high but B is low, the circuit will come on. And of course, if it, both of the uh, inputs are on, then the circuit will switch on. So a good example of this, going back to our boiler, is the override switch and the timer. You set your timer off for your boiler to come on, but you also want it to come on if, you, if it's cold and you press the override switch. So if either the timer or the override switch are switched on, you want your boiler to come on. So you would use an OR gate. A NOT gate is very simple. It only has one input, and basically it just reverses whatever the input is. So when the input is low, it will switch it and make the output come on. But when the input is high, it will switch it and turn the output off. So for higher tier, you need to know about two further logic gates, the NAND gate and the NOR gate. Now logic gates can be combined. So NAND gate is simply a combination of an AND gate and a NOT gate. And a NOR gate is simply a combination of an OR gate and a NOT gate. Notice the difference in the symbols is simply this circle at the front of the symbol. Now a NOT gate simply makes the output opposite to the input. So by combining a NOT gate with other logic gates, you simply are making the outputs opposite to what they would be. So if you remember, for an AND gate, we only ever got a high output if both of the inputs were actually high. But using a NOT gate in combination with this, it reverses or makes your outputs opposite to what they would be normally. So if you imagine, if we wanted to, we could actually put a column in between these two columns to show what the output from the AND gate would be. And then the NOT gate is simply making the overall output opposite to what that would be. And the same logic applies to the NOR gate. Just imagine what the output would be if you had just an OR gate on its own. But then, of course, what you do is you apply a NOT gate, which then reverses the output and makes it opposite to what it would be normally. So hopefully you can see why they are called logic circuits. So that brings us to the end of this lesson on logic gates. Let's review the lesson objectives. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of what a logic gate is and in particular how we can use truth tables to explain how logic gates work. You need to be able to describe the truth tables for AND, NOT and OR gates and those of you that are doing the higher tier would also need to describe the truth tables for NAND and NOR gates.